Chapter Six of the Seven Sleuths Club. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Seven Sleuths Club by Carol Norton. Chapter Six: Milkmaids and Butter Churners. The next day arrived, as next days will, and, as the blizzard had blown itself away and only a soft, feathery snow was falling, the girls, communicating by the repaired telephone system, decided to walk to the home of Peggy Pierce, which was centrally located. In fact, it was on a quiet side street, below the tracks, not a fashionable neighbourhood, but that mattered not at all to the girls of Sunnyside. The parents of some of the seven were the richest in town, others were just moderately well off, but one and all were able to send their daughters to the seminary, and that constituted the main link that bound them together, for they saw each other every day and walked back and forth together. Peggy's father owned the Emporium, a typical village dry goods store. Peg threw the door open as soon as the girls appeared at the wooden gate in the fence that surrounded the rather small yard of her home. "'Hooray for the S.S.C.!' she sang out, and Mary replied with the inevitable, "'Hail, hail, the gang's all here!' When they were in the vestibule and Peg, with a small broom, had swept from each the soft snow, they flocked into the double parlours, which were being warmed by a cosy, airtight stove. On the walls were old-fashioned family portraits, and the haircloth furniture proclaimed to the most casual observer that it had seen its best days, but, as in the home of Bertha, there was an atmosphere of comfort and cheer which made one feel pleased to be there. A dear little old lady sat between the window and the stove. She pushed her specks up on the ruffle of her lavender-ribboned cap and beamed at the girls as they entered. Then, laying down her knitting, she held out a softly wrinkled hand to Gertrude, who was the first at her side. "'I hope you girls won't mind my being here,' she said, looking from one to another. "'I could go somewhere else, if you would.' "'Well, Grandmother Dorcas, I'll say you'll not go anywhere else,' Peggy declared at once. "'For one thing, there isn't another real warm room in this house except the kitchen, and secondly, we all want you to help us play this prank.' The old lady, who had partly risen, sank back as she looked lovingly at her grandchild. To the others, she said, "'It's mighty nice of Peggy to want me to share her good times. Some young folks don't do that. They think grandparents are too old to enjoy things, I guess, but I feel just as young inside as I did when I was your age, and that was a good many years ago. Now go right ahead, just like I wasn't here.' The dear old lady took up her knitting, replaced her glasses, and began to make the needles fly dexterously. "'Did you all find suitable costumes?' the hostess asked. "'I didn't,' Betty Bird declared. "'You know when Mother and I came up from the South to keep house for Uncle George, "'we only brought our newest clothes, and nothing that was suitable for a milkmaid costume.' "'Well, don't you worry, little one,' Peggy laughingly declared, "'for Betty's pretty face was looking quite dismal. "'My grandmother Dorcas has saved everything she wore since she was a little girl, I do believe, "'and now she is eighty years old. "'There are several trunks full of things in the attic. "'I told Grandma about our plan, and she was so amused, more than Geraldine will be, I'm sure of that. "'I thought we'd go up there to dress. "'It's real warm, for Mother has been baking all the morning, "'and the kitchen chimney goes right through the storeroom, and it's as cosy as can be.' Then, to the little old lady who was somewhat deaf, the girl said in a louder voice, "'Grandma, dear, when we're dressed, we'll come down here and show you how we look.' The sweet, wrinkled old face beamed with pleasure. "'Good, good,' she said. "'I'll want to see you.' All of the girls except Betty had bundles or satchels, and merrily they followed their young hostess upstairs to the attic. They found the small trunk room cosy and warm, as Peggy had promised." On the wall hung a long racked mirror, and a few chairs that were out of repair stood about the walls. Several trunks there were, including one that looked very old indeed. For a jolly half-hour the girls tried on the funny old things they had found in the trunks, utilising some of the garments they had brought from their homes, and at the end of that time they were costumed to their complete satisfaction. In front of the long, cracked mirror, Rose stood laughing merrily. "'Oh, girls!' she exclaimed. "'Don't I look comical?' She surely did, for, on top of her yellow curls, she had a red felt hat with a very high crown, which had been in vogue many years before. This Peggy had trimmed with a pink ribbon and a green feather. An old-fashioned calico dress with a bright red sash and fingerless gloves finished the costume. The other girls were gowned just as outlandishly, and they laughed until the rafters rang. "'Peggy, you are funniest of all,' Mary declared. 
"'That's because she has six braids sticking out in all directions,' Betty Bird said, "'with different coloured piece of calico tied to each one.' "'Honestly, girls, I have laughed until my sides ached,' Doris Drexel said. "'But what I would like to know is how we are ever going to keep straight faces when we get there. "'If one of us laugh, that will give the whole thing away.' "'We had practice enough in that comedy we gave last spring at school,' Bertha Angel said. "'Don't you remember we had to look as solemn as owls all through that comical piece? "'Well, what we did once we can do again.' "'I did giggle just a little,' the youngest confessed. "'Betty Bird, don't you dare giggle,' Peggy shook a warning finger at the little maid. "'Then she added, "'It's such a lot of work to get all decked up like this. "'I wish we could make that call today.' "'Mary's face brightened. "'We can!' "'I actually forgot to tell you that Alfred Morrison was over last night to see Brother "'and told him they had arrived a day sooner than they had expected. "'Hooray for us!' Doris sang out. "'It does seem like wasted effort to get all togged up this way just for a rehearsal. "'Let's go downstairs and speak our parts before Grandma Dorcas, "'then we'll find someone to drive us out. "'I'll phone the store and see if I can borrow Johnny Cowles. "'He's delivering from the Emporium now, and I guess this snowy day he can spare the time.' This being agreed upon, they descended to the living room. The girls pretended that Grandma Dorcas was the proud Geraldine, and they were calling upon her. The old lady enjoyed her part and did it well. Then Johnny appeared with the sleigh, and the girls gleefully departed. End of chapter 6